Let's now walk through the number of steps you have to go through to work out the profit margins or, or just any margin margin type analysis uh, on, on top of your data. So you've obviously got to start from a core measure. So let's look at what we're going to do to the underlying, what sort of, what calculations we want to do over the underlying tables. Now, if we look at our sales table here, let's actually jump to our, our data model first. So you'll see that we have a data model where we've got a sale, it's this organization which sells stuff. We've got a customer table, a products table, a regional table, and a dates table. And the sales, so the sales table is where it's a fact table, it's where the bulk of our measures are going to occur over. And if we jump to that table now, you'll see that we've got a total revenue column. We've also got a total unit cost column, and we've got unit price, order quantity, etc. So we're going to have to do a few calculations over these uh, columns within this table to then go get to our profit margin analysis, because obviously we want to get a percentage profit margin. Now, what some of you might think that you have to do is you have to add additional columns onto here to actually work, work through the logic to get to the answer. But that is not the case. And uh, do not, absolutely do not create additional columns. You want to do this all inside measures, virtual measures. They're far, it's a far more effective way to actually uh, calculate these more, uh, not complex, but uh, three-step or, or couple-step um, pro, uh, calculation processes. So first of all, we need to create our, our first measure, which is just going to be total sales. So in this case, we're going to do a sum of the total revenue column. Okay, so now that we've got that, we need to work out what is the total cost, obviously, because we need to find out what our total profits are. So the way to work out total costs we need, we need to use an iterating function. So we need to use, because we don't actually have a total cost column, so I'm gonna to go total cost. In this case, I'm gonna use SUMX, because we can iterate with SUMX, and I'm gonna go and say, go to the sales table, and times the total unit cost by the quantity for every single row in that table, and then that's going to give me, or give us the total cost calculation. So we can double check this by bringing in our date. And what I like to do is always turn these into tables. And that date is not how I like it formatted. So I'm just going to jump to my dates table and format this to this like so. And then if I bring in my total sales, you will see that I get total sales for every single day. And then I get total cost for every single day. But now I want to work out my total profits, and this is easy from here. So I'm just going to go total profits. And I'm going to go total sales minus total costs. And then if I drag total profits in, you'll see that we've got total profits, which is great. And then now we can work out our margins very easily from here. And we're going to do this all virtually. Virtually, we have not had to go back to our data table and add any columns. I'm going to add a new measure. I'm going to call this. I'm going to actually call this percent percent profit margins. And then I'm going to go to divide total profits by total sales. And then I'm going to put in zero as the alternative result. And then this is actually we've got to turn, make sure this is actually a percentage. And I'm only going to have one decimal place. And then now if we drag in our profit margins, we can see our profit margins per day, like so. So now we have this dynamic profit margins calculation, which is exactly what we want. And now we can use this, use this measure in a number of different ways. So we could look at well, what is our profit margin per customer, for example. And so I could drag profit margins into the uh, next to the customer. I could actually turn this into a visualization. We might also want to see, well, how, how do profit margins trend over time? So I'm actually going to use this table and I'm going to make a, a line like so. And that in itself is quite busy as you, as you can see. So we might want to change it up or we might be happy with it. We might want to work out a moving average, for example. Lots of things that we can do there. Um, then we can also, we could also look, well, what are our profit margins? And I'm just copying and pasting here. It's a very effective way to quickly create uh, visualizations. 
and I add my profit uh, product name in there so we can see well, what are our uh, highest versus our lowest margin products. I'm just going to put in some data labels like so. And now we can also see well over time, now that we've got all, this, all these calculations, we can then click into our product 14 and we can see how things have tracked over time uh, dynamically. We can see how our profit margins and all our additional metrics for, uh, for that matter, see how they change um, over time like so. And so we can also, I might want to change this to an area chart change the color, make it look compelling, and uh, like so. And now we can very quickly do, as you can see, some great analysis on our profit margins and, and how those are affected by particular regions we sell in, particular dates we sell in, uh, and so on and so forth. What we could also do here, just uh, before we uh, round this off, is we could, in this case, we could actually look, this, look at this from a uh, month and year perspective. So we could place that in there. Go and make sure though that these um, that these are actually sorted correctly. So I'm just going to sort this by the month in year, which is the index column for that uh, VEX text value. And then I can change this back to a column chart, and we can see how margins are actually tracking through time from a month and year perspective there. So pretty compelling stuff. Key, key points to note is always do this in measures and do every intermediary step before you get to this point. You could, in theory, write the, the, all the logic you want in this end measure here, but it's always best to start with this. Start simple, start with your total sales, then your total costs, then jump to your total profits, and then go to your profit margin. Because by doing this, you're, you're, you're able to, well, if you start simple, you can actually utilize these calculations or these measures in a number of different uh, branches. Uh, I, I like to call them more branches of measures later on, like time intelligence or more advanced analysis. So it's always good to start with these simple ones. And then you can very quickly see how you can actually get to this uh, quite simple uh, and effective profit margins measure and then add that measure inside of a range of different uh, visualizations.